A while ago, I made this library called DiceKit, and I added this one feature because I wanted to answer this one question that led to what I think is a pretty fun demo. So first of all, uh, what does this library do? Well, it gives you an object, uh, a dice object, and you can make a dice by saying, well, let's just have a dice uh, with six sides. And one of the cool things right out of the box is the way that it's represented, because you're going to notice that this is a nice looking Altair chart. And it's a bit unlike uh, what a representation normally looks like. So normally when you're doing something in Python, you kind of get this thing that reminds you of the terminal. It's basically just a string. That's the way that we represent a class or a object. But the really cool thing about being in a modern notebook is that you can let that go and you can really determine how you want the thing to be visualized uh, yourself. If you wanted to do this for something specific to Marimo, what you got to do is you got to add a display method spelled like so to a object. Then Marimo detects that this is something that can be displayed differently than normal. Alternatively, there is also a, uh, I guess, more of a standard across many notebooks. It's this HTML representation method you can also attach. Display is more bespoke to Marimo. This is, again, more general, but should also do the trick. But uh, the main thing that's just kind of cool is you can make a dice. So let's just make a dice object out of this, right? And uh, right out of the box, like one of the things that's just kind of cool about this is you can add two dice together. And oh, then you get the total number of eyes that those two dice would roll. That's kind of nifty. That's kind of useful. One really cool demo I always like to do with Marimo is that you can also just always add a slider. So you're able to do something like, hey, uh, let's just add a very basic slider here, just like that. And maybe we can also do something like slider dot value. And now what you're able to do is you're able to specify the number of eyes on that dice by dragging around this slider. And this is a really cool thing. You can combine user interface elements with the context of a browser with Python code. And yeah, there's a whole lot of rethinking one can do now that we have these tools at our disposal. But uh, this was only the start of the library. This is like the first thing I build. This was kind of a cool demo. After this, I was kind of thinking like, what else can you do that's kind of useful? So uh, one of the things you could do is you can also calculate the expected value or the variance. And just to show that that works, right? Uh, this is a normal dice. If I take the expected value, you can see that there is one. There is also a, a variance. No huge surprise there. Uh, there's also a probability that you can calculate, which I think is also just kind of a neat trick. So one thing you can do is you can say, hey, uh, what's the probability that the dice that I've got over here, that's going to roll a six or like any number that's higher than the six. That is, of course, also a distribution, which is why this looks like a dice object. But what you can also do is you can say, well, I'm only really interested in the true value here. So if you wrap that with a P that stands for probability. It's a bit of overkill as far as syntactic sugar goes, but one thing I did think was cute is this does look like what it looks like from a math book, right? So, you know, API does feel a little bit sugary, but still kind of elegant. So that's definitely kind of nice. But uh, the feature I added recently is this one. You can now also calculate order statistics. So you can do things like, hey, let's suppose that I roll this dice uh, not once, but let's say I've got three of these dice and you've got uh, the highest die that you roll, the second highest die that you roll, and the third highest die that you roll. This is what the distributions of that looks like, by the way, which is also kind of interesting. But the main thing that's kind of cool is you could say, well, what if you take the highest die out of all of them um, and the second highest die, what's the probability that the highest die is larger than the second one? And again, you get some distribution. So um, this order thing is interesting for another reason, though, and that's related to this game my family loves to play around Christmas, which is Risk. And specifically, it's this one thing that you have when uh, there's two territories, right? So let's pretend that, okay, uh, territory one, territory two, you've got the attacking territory, you've got the defending territory. And if I remember correctly, the attacker is allowed to roll three dice and the defender is allowed to roll two. And let's pretend this is the highest one, the lowest, and this is the one in between, you've also got like the highest one over here. Uh, effectively, what happens is you pair them up and then you compare the dice values to determine which armies won and which armies lost. And the rule, if I remember correctly, is that the attacker value always has to be higher than the defender value. And thanks to these order statistics, that's not something you can actually model. And when you model it, something interesting happens. So again, let's uh, also do the ordered statistics, but for the uh, attacker and the defender, so I'll we'll call this A. We've also got defender dice here, and now I should be able to do something like, hey, what's the chance that uh, the attacker is better than the defender for the best die that they both roll? And we can do the same thing for the second highest die that they roll, right? And let's uh, do this for a normal six-sided dice. And let's also put this in a nice horizontal stack just because that makes it a little bit easier to talk about it. 
And also just for demo purposes, uh, let's just set the slider at six. Here's the th when I first did this, um, it was fairly counterintuitive because I thought, you know, I'm rolling three dice as the attacker over here. So that's going to be a big benefit, right? But if I compare the best attacking army, it's actually more likely that that army will lose against the defender. The second best army, though, that has a much higher chance of actually winning. And that felt, again, counterintuitive because you would think out of the three dice, I picked the highest value. Hmm, what is happening here? And then I added the slider and that led me to play around. And, you know, let's go for higher values and see what changes. As I get higher and higher, especially if I get much higher, oh, then you see that the attacker has a much bigger benefit. But for lower values, especially for the first best attacking army there, you actually see that the defender is at a big advantage. And again, this struck me as counterintuitive at first, but then I started reminding myself of the fact that oh, wait, the attacker really has to be higher than the defender. It's not the case that the attacker can be higher or equal to the defender. That's not the case. And when you have a dice with only six sides, well, then the chance of having, let's say, two sixes is actually not that small. So, oh, how can I make sure that this is something that actually benefits the attacker? Well, by rolling a dice that has way more eyes, because then the odds of having two dice with equal numbers is just way smaller. And that's something you totally see. If I were to scoot this up all the way up until a d20, oh, then it's a totally different ballgame. So, okay, um, this is a cute demo. I learned something about risk. That is very nice. Uh, the main thing that I wanted to point out, though, is not so much this library, but more uh, this way of working. Because notice how having some user interface elements with some good outputs and some code in the middle that I can rearrange as I see fit really gives me the best of all the worlds. I never got into low code tools precisely for the reason that I am very flexible when it comes to having a programming language. It just gives me so much freedom. But I still want to have easy to access user interface elements, and I still want to have a lot of freedom when it comes to showing the output in a convenient fashion. And again, having a modern notebook is great, but the next step, of course, is that we all start writing libraries that can really benefit from this environment. So DiceKit is kind of my first attempt at doing this. I think it's a very nice, demoable, useful thing. But there are way more things that we could potentially be building. And I figured it'd be good to maybe highlight this on my personal channel, if only that it can help maybe motivate you to think of something similar. This is just a example that I came up with, and the best way to share is to actually start building. So definitely think about making libraries maybe this way. And a final pitch that I can also maybe make is that if you want to make proper widgets in a notebook, then you do want to check out this library called AnyWidget. It's a library that I'm using more and more recently. Uh, there's a very convenient copy and pasteable demo uh, right here on the front page. Um, but this gives you access to proper widgets that you can put in any Python notebook out there. It also plays really well with Marimo. So yeah, uh, in short, more libraries like this. I think it would be great. But uh, also check out DiceKit if this seems fun to play with.